Today is June 26, 2009. I am Andrea Mott. It is a pleasure to conduct this interview for the Dakota Memories Oral History Project in Dickinson, North Dakota. Can you please state your full name, including maiden name? Emilia Hootmacher Erlocker. And Emilia, when and where were you born? In Fayette, in the, in the farm halls, I guess. And have you ever heard an interesting story about your birth? No. <laughs> Do you know if there is a midwife or a doctor present at the time? I would think a mid. I don't even, I'm not even sure. Did they talk never about it? Never talked about it, no, never did. And can you please share some of your earliest memories with us? Just the earliest thing you remember? Well, I don't know if we... There were only the two rooms at first, and and uh, I remember I like ate. I always sat on the cream can when we ate, and so on. I don't know. And what did your house look like at that time? Well, then it looked pretty good. We didn't know any different. <clears throat> Can you describe the interior? Well, it was walls. They were with kind of, a, I think, a calcite paint or something. And then Mom, she put oil cloth on the kitchen walls so you could wipe it off better. And um, what color was the paint on the walls then? Pink or green, anything. What did your bedroom look like? Where did you sleep? Well, we all slept in one bedroom. There were three three girls and and then the folks. Well, we had an older sister. She had epilepsy, so she slept in a folding bed in the living room. Nobody wanted to sleep with her. <clears throat> Up with a sister who had epilepsy? It was okay. We, you know, we didn't know any better, so. What kind of care was there for her? She just got medication. And was she able to, to help out in any chores or anything of that sort? Oh, she did like dust or do dishes, but. She didn't go outside to do chores or anything. And did family members have to watch her pretty well? Not really. Okay. Yeah, you know, it just come and went. You never knew when she was going to get it or... So it was just... And when she had an attack, what would what would be done for her? Put her to bed and... Or if she was outside, lay her on the ground, you know. And, and what were you, you and your two other sisters' names at that time, the older? Well, siblings? she was the oldest, and then was myself. Then was uh, Elner, and then Catherine, and then Alec. Who were you closest to growing up? I don't think I was close to anyone. <laughs> well, mom like, but yeah, but we were scared of dad. And why were you scared of dad? <laughs> well, we he scold us, you know, and and he didn't have to tell us twice not to. I mean, he was strict. So would you say he was the stricter of, of the two? Oh, oh yes. Mm -hmm. And what was your relationship like with him? Well, I mean, we talked and so on, but... And how, 
how did your father express emotions like fear or, or love and anger? Well, I don't think there was any. <laughs> Maybe like when he tell us to settle down or something, but other than that way. What would he do when he was mad about something? Well, he never, never really did anything then. He wasn't that mad, but, you know. And can you describe him a little bit for us? Just what kind of man he was? I don't know. He, just a plain, plain old man, I think. I don't know. There. And now you mentioned you were close to your mother. Um, what was what was she like? Well, she, she was nice. <clears throat> well, we didn't get everything what we wanted, but I mean, she there was no money, so so it it just. So when it came time to getting clothes for you and your sisters, how how did she how did she manage that? Well, we never we never got to go along. Whatever they brought home, a dress or a coat, if it was too big, you grow into it. And we ne or shoes, too. We never never got to go along to get anything. And we didn't have any extra clothes either. I remember having one dress, and well, we wore it Sundays, and then it was washed for next Sunday, you know. So there weren't any extra clothes. What about shoes? And that was the same thing. You wore them till I remember putting cardboard in the bottom when the sole wore through. And, and what would um, what was a typical daily outfit then for you? We wore bib overalls most of the time. We even went to school with them. And would your mother make most of your clothes? No, she didn't. We just didn't have many. You know, um, I think the relief sometimes, they called it, you know, then she'd go pick some out there, but a dress or two for her. your mother express her emotions? Didn't talk like, like I do. <laughs> Don't get in as much trouble then. <laughs> and what would she do if she, if she were angry about something? I don't know. I don't remember that she ever did anything. She's gone so long. She passed away when she was 61. Um, and when and where was your mother born? In Dickinson. Yeah. And where did she, um, where did she, where did she die? On the, f On the farm. Yeah, well, she was in the hospital when she died. She had gallstone surgery, but. And what year was that? 69. How would your parents discipline you and your siblings if you'd done something wrong? I don't know. We just caught heck. There was nothing. I mean, there was no car or anything. We didn't go anywhere, so they couldn't take that away. You know, we, I don't know, they just scolded us, and that was about it. And do you know how your parents met? No, I don't. They ever talk, did your mother at least ever talk about the wedding or no not not that I remember it wasn't something they talked about then no yeah. there were a lot of things they didn't talk about and what if you could describe their marriage what how would you how would you describe it you mean if they were happier kind of marriage yeah that they had. yeah I would say I mean they I'd say they have a, had a happy marriage and like they'd go 
go to the garden together all the time, you know. Well, of course, they had to walk a ways and so on and so forth, but they uh, they'd do that together. Yeah. And what kind of things did they do for pastimes? They played a lot of cards, like we do. They'd walk to the neighbors and play cards. And did you know your neighbors well at that time? Oh, yeah. And do you remember their names? Wendell Russhaus were the ones they were with most of the time. I'd like to, to talk a little bit about your grandparents. Did you know your grandparents well? Well, we'll start with your mother's parents. And well, then we didn't see that often. But uh, I remember Grandma always bringing a bag of candy when she came <laughs> out. <laughs> Do you remember what kind of candy she would bring? No, mm -mm, I don't even remember what they had then. And what about your grandfather? That, don't remember that much about him either. They didn't come out, you know, it was all the way. They lived uh, well, south of town here, and you know, way out there. They didn't go out that often either. And what about your father's parents? Did you know them well? Well, they lived closer. See, my uncle was in the army, and then I'd always have to go over and read the letters that he sent. And which uncle was that? Joe Hootmacher. And is, why, why were you the one who had to read the letters? I guess we were the only ones around, like my older sister Rose, you know, she couldn't. We, and uh, I always got the honors. And what kind of things would he say in his letters? Gee, I don't remember that either. And how often did you have to, to read them? Well, whenever, whenever you wrote home. Was it frequently? I would say probably twice a month. I don't know exactly, but... And uh, what was your grandmother's name? Frances. Thomas. And did you know her well? Yeah. If you could describe her, how would you how would you describe your grandmother? Oh, she was nice too. She always gave you cookies or something, you know. <laughs> was she a good cook? Well, I don't know. I didn't. There was nothing. But meat and potatoes and potatoes and meat, you know, <laughs> it wasn't hard to cook. Was that typical German-Russian meal? Well, that's all there was, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, there was no vegetable. So. And what about your grandfather? Um, what was he like? Well, he was, um, I guess with some of them, he was strict, you know. Was he strict with you? No. Yeah, no. And where was your grandfather born? In Russia. And uh, did he ever talk about the trip over? Was he old enough to remember that? His trip to the United States? Grandpa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, well, he was married already. They had children when they came over. <clears throat> and then my dad came along, too. But they, they had a big family, and I know they said one died on the ship. Well, they just throw him in the water, right, in the ocean, I guess. They, because it took a long time to get over here, you know. Did they ever describe the journey? No. Mm -mm. Do you know what year that was? No. And, um, and how close did your grandparents live to you and your parents? Oh, 
maybe a half mile. <clears throat> Did you see the rock pile when you were out there? Yeah, that's probably isn't even a half mile. Did they visit you all very often since they live so close? Well, we went more over there. And why, yeah. why would you more go over there? Well, I guess Grandma couldn't. It was easier for us to walk over because there was no car. So. And did you know your aunts and uncles growing up? Yeah. Were you close to them at all? Well... I don't know, we saw them, but we never did anything together or like that. And did they live pretty close then? Well, they were over there till they got married. Well, then we didn't see them. And what about your cousins? Were you close to any of them? No. bit about um, about school uh, when you were younger what did you want to be when you grew up well I don't know if I had my mind made up <laughs> but when I wanted to go to high school dad said uh, you don't need no high school education to wash diapers so that was the end of my high school <laughs> So he basically said, you're not going. You're not going, right. Where would you have had to go? Well, then I, Dickinson, I guess. Would you have had to board Dickinson, now? right, I'm sure. There was, there was just, I think, no way to go, no money, no nothing, so that was the answer. Of course, I had nine children then, so I got my share of diapers. <laughs> um, and what, what was the school you went to? School. Country school, yeah. We had to walk a mile and a half first few years and after to that? the north. Then it was moved closer. About seventh, eighth grade, they, they moved it closer. And did you usually walk? Mm hmm. And All the time. What was the school like as far as size and student attendance? Well, they were all grades, you know, but not that many, maybe one, two, you know, in a grade. And do you remember any of your school teachers? Well, um, Evelyn Carey was one of them, and uh, Marie uh, Makarook. She, in fact, just lives up here a ways. Was one of my young? teachers. Young? Young teacher. Was she a young teacher then? Well, then I only found out l later that she, out of high school, you could, no. Yeah, you didn't have to go to college. Out of high school, you could teach. And she, that, so she did that because one, uh, one lady told me that that was her teacher. And I says, couldn't have been. She was mine, you know. Well, then I asked Marie, and then she said that she could teach right out of high school. She didn't have to <laughs> go to college. So that, I suppose that's what I should have done instead of ask. <laughs> but then I didn't get to high school, so I guess it, it wouldn't have worked anyway. Mm -hmm. And did your teachers, did they treat anybody differently at the school? Because no. Because of their ethnicity or, mm -hmm. or social yeah, no, I wouldn't say they did. And at times, did you have to stay at home and help with work on the farm? All the time. See, like my sister, she went to school for a while. Then she'd get her spell. Well, then I'd have to walk her home. By then it was all over. And uh, that one year I had missed too many days to write exams, but they let me write anyway. And then whenever Ma washed clothes... You know, I had to stay home and help, so uh, I missed a lot of school when I went to school. And how did you feel about that at the time? Well, I guess they told you that's what, the way it is, and that's the way it was. You didn't argue long. <laughs> and 
What is your favorite memory about going to school? I don't know. I like math all the time. And what kind of math did you study? Was it? Well, it was lots different than now, you know. I don't think I get that math now. And what other subjects were you taught in the country school? Well, history and hygiene, English, geography. I think that was pretty much it. So were you a good student then, would you say? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and did you ever have any homework? We school? did. Yeah. But then our my sister Catherine, she was born... Uh, and uh, we didn't dare do it at home because she wanted the books. And then we'd get check to put the books away so she don't want them. So that wasn't so good, but that's the way it was. <laughs> um, and did your parents or, or any of your sisters ever help you with any of that homework? No. And you mentioned books. What kind of books did you read at home? Well, it was just our class books. Okay. Yeah, never. Oh, maybe like, uh, oh, what the heck, Ensel and Gretel or something like that. Uh, there's about four or whatever that I had won one time for uh, the tests, you know. But uh, I feel like if you had a hundred in spelling for a length of time, you know. I just can't think of the names of them now. But otherwise, we never had no books or anything. And what language did you speak in school? English. What language did you grow up speaking? German. And were you ever treated differently because <coughs> of what you of your ability to speak German? No. <laughs> and what did you usually take to school for lunch? Um, choke chair jelly sandwich. And what did you take it in? Oh, a uh, carol syrup bucket. And how big were those? Well, you get the half gallon or the gallon size, you know, usually the half gallon size. And what, when you were at school, what kind of social activities did they have for the children as far as you know, during recess or noon hour? Just played games outside. Do you remember any of those games? Well, like uh, Andy I over and um, Pump Pump Pull Away and, and I forget what that stick game, the name of that was, you know, you'd run and get some sticks. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> Too long ago. And did, at school, did they ever celebrate any of the holidays or? Well, Christmas, we'd have a program, yeah. Can you describe that? We'd put a play on, you know, studied forever, practiced forever, you know, before and then. Did you have a favorite play that you were in? No. Were they all similar? Kind of whatever the teacher picked, you know, to be, yeah. Um, well, you mentioned some outside activities. What kind of activities would you play inside? Well, us girls played cards or dominoes. Um, and that, how did, oh, I'm sorry. That was about it. It's going. Um, and where did you learn to play these games? At home, folks taught us, you know. And did they ever teach you anything that was typically German-Russian that they came that they brought no. from the old country? No. No, mm -mm. they didn't bring any of those. Mm -mm. Um, and what about toys? Did you have any toys growing up? Well, we'd get a doll for Christmas, and then we'd have to put her in the cupboard when company came. Show them your new doll. Well, then we thought we'd get to play with it for a little, put it back, put it back. So they lasted a long time. <laughs> so that was, was it rare? Did you just get one? Yeah, one we, just, we just got one thing. 
like a harm harmonica one year, I remember, you know, and just... Well, can you kind of describe how your family would celebrate the Christmas holiday? But, uh, we never had anybody in. It would just be our own family, you know. Mom would bake a ham and so on. I mean, we just... It was nothing special. Did you ever have visitors at that time? Or was it just you and your, your parents and your siblings? Usually just, well, sometimes some of the neighbors, but I mean. And what about um, decorating? Did they ever decorate for the holidays? No. No, never did. And uh, what about... Easter. Did your family celebrate Easter? We called it Easter, or eggs for Easter. And what did but, you use for that? Well, dye, you know, Easter dye. And what, it, what about the 4th of July? We didn't do nothing then either. Did you ever want to do something on the 4th of July, or did you just not? We didn't, I guess... You didn't know any better, you know, that was just the four. <laughs> what about um, names days or birthdays? Were those celebrated at your house? Well, his dad's names day, yeah, they'd have several couples for cards. Now I don't know where they put them when I get out there now. It, then it looked pretty big, you know, but now it's everything's so small. <laughs> What about birthdays? We never celebrated birthday. Now, when you were growing up, did you have any favorite rhymes or sayings that you remember? No. What about songs? Not really. Growing up, was religion a big part? Of we your went life? to church. Yeah, we went to church, and then two weeks in summer to sister school. Can you describe that for us? What, what that was like? Well, they came from all over, the kids, you know, and and uh, every, anybody that went to church there, and then there'd be some couple of sisters there that would teach religion. And what was a typical day like at sister school? Well, I don't know. I guess they taught, taught you. Did you have to board no. anywhere? No. Where did they teach it then? At the church. And what was the, the church name? St. Edward's. And what was a typical church service like at St. Edward's? Well, they had mass and that was. Were there seating arrangements? There, there was pews. There were pews in the church. What do you mean arrangements? Um, as far as men and women and. Oh, well, they were, yeah. The men were alone and the women were alone. And what was the typical um, service like? What was, as far as language, they would speak? And English. They would speak English in church? Took an hour till Mass was over. And did Sunday Sunday meals at your house, did those differ than the ones that would be earlier? We usually had chicken noodle soup on Sundays. And how would your mom make chicken noodle soup? Well, had to clean the chicken, <laughs> put it in the kettle, and boil it, and had noodles. When how long would that making the chicken noodle soup? How long oh, I suppose two, three hours. 
And did you, were you in the kitchen helping at this time? Well, there was not much to do, you know, once your chicken was on the stove, why? Um, could you talk a little bit about youth activities and dating and um, can you tell us what kind of pastimes you, you participated in when you were a teenager? We didn't go to any dances, no. No. So what would you do for fun? Well, I guess we called anything fun. <laughs> I don't know. And did, did your family have a radio? Well, I was in the seventh or eighth grade. I was supposed to, for classes in school, listen to the news, and there was no radio yet. So what did so you it, have to do? Well, I didn't do nothing for that. <laughs> and what about going to the movies? Did you ever go to a movie when you were younger? Nope, and I can count on one hand the dances I went to before I got married. We just... We didn't have a brother and didn't have a car and it just didn't go anywhere. And when you would, when you did go to town, where did you go? Well, to the grocery store, but we, we all said to stay home. We never got to go alone. Were there ever times that you did when you got older? <clears throat> no, not. Not that you can remember? Not that I can remember. And um, how old were you when you started dating? We didn't date that long. <laughs> so what would you say? That well, let's see. I got married when I was uh, 20, like in, in uh, May. I was 20, and we got married in November. But I don't know if he told you this. He went with my sister first. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us about that, how that panned well, out? Well, I, I don't know. I don't went to visit her first, and then, well, then we switched. And uh, how long? So, oh, go ahead. So I knew him, you know, from coming to see her, you know, so. And then we had to wait till my brother was born, so, till Alec was born, so. And then you were able to get married? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mom said she wasn't, I don't blame her, you know, she didn't want to go. Go to the way. <laughs> when she was about to have a baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, speaking of, of weddings, we'll, we'll talk about that for a minute. Um, you kind of mentioned how you met Frank. Um, what was your What was your parents' attitude towards him? Well, they didn't. I guess they liked him. They didn't say nothing when he'd come out, you know. And when and where did you get married? St. Edwards and Fia. And can you describe the the, uh, the ceremony? Well, it was just a regular mass. Well, there were attendants and so on. And who, who were your attendants? Now you're asking. <laughs> I don't remember if I had four or six. I mean, uh, three. I know Elner was, and his sister. I think only had two. I have to get a picture. <laughs> um, and can you can you take us through the entire day and kind of describe how we had mass, and then uh, we had dinner at the house out there. And what they cook? Well. It's Chicken noodle soup, and I don't even remember what the meat was, and so on. Probably chicken, I don't know. Or maybe pork, I don't even, I'm not even sure, I shouldn't even say. <laughs> and, uh, well, in the afternoon, why they were dancing in the house in that little spot, and then we had supper, and we came to town for the dance. To Dickens. Dance in, in um, 
<laughs> no, I can't think of that either. It burned, uh, Baghdad. Baghdad. It burned down then later. <clears throat> so were there, were there any money dances for you or Frank? Not then. Um, and was there anything unusual about your courtship or your wedding? No, I wouldn't say. Um, and did you did you have a honeymoon? No. And where did you where did you go to live after you were married? Then we went over to New England to his folks. And then that summer we moved in onto a farm just west of the place. What was it like having your own home? It was okay. <laughs> was there anything else you'd like to add about weddings or wedding traditions? No, I don't think so. Talk about um, some historical events during the time you were living at home. Um, what was it like? Uh, during the Dirty Thirties. Can you kind of describe that? Well, um, I know that one year the grasshoppers were so bad that um, it would, uh, they'd be up flying in the sun and it wouldn't, you know, it would be so dim and just like a cloud was over the sun. I don't, uh, it wasn't the thirties, I don't remember it. But I remember, you know, the, seeing it, but what year I, I couldn't say, but, yeah. And what about the dust? Do you remember that? Not too much about the dust, but, but I mean, it was dry, you know, nothing. Grew, and nothing grew. How did, do you know how your parents were able to cope during this time? No, I guess they just did. I guess they just, like Grandpa and Dad's dad, they never had anything extra either, and I think you just lived with it, you know. Um, and how, how did the Depression affect your family? I don't know. I think I was too young to. <laughs> um, and how did your parents keep food on the table during this time? Well, you know... Uh, like I said, meat and potatoes while Ma baked bread, and then we had chickens, and there were eggs, so that's... And um, was there anything else about this time that you would like to add before we move on a little? No. Okay. Uh, I'd like to talk just a little bit about World War II. Can you tell us how the outbreak of World War II changed your life? It didn't... Uh, did do like I didn't notice anything. You didn't notice how if if anything changed from what it was. No. Before. Mm. Um, did rationing affect your family? Well, somewhat, I suppose, but uh, we never had nothing to begin with, you know. So all I remember is how they were talking when, like, nylons would come out and everybody is lining up for nylons and things like that, but. Were you ever in line for, no. <laughs> for nylon? No. And um, do, you, do you remember where you were when Pearl Harbor was attacked? We were at home. It was a Sunday night. The wind blew. That night it was dusty, I remember. The wind blew so hard and yeah, we were home. And where, how did you hear about it? On the radio? Mm-hmm. And can you kind of tell us about that? What was said or... I don't who remember. Who was there? Do you remember who was there? In the house with you? Well, Mom's brother, they had come out. It was a Sunday night, and they had come to butcher a pig. So they were there, but other than that, why... Did your parents say anything that you can remember? No. And uh, w 
Was anyone in your family drafted? No. For the war? Uh, well, my uncle, but but that's all that was. life just a little bit, probably touch on it later as well. Um, who usually prepared the meals in your family? Well, Mom usually did, because we'd have to carry water and get the cows and milk, and so she usually prepared the meals. So your mom would do most of it? Did you help out much in the kitchen? Well, when we were in, like noon probably, but not morning or night, she'd have it done till we got in. And do you remember the kind of meals that she would make? Was there anything specific? Well, we had a lot of soup noodles. And what are those? It's made out of dough and potatoes. And were noodle dishes really common at that time? No, we never, not macaroni or nothing like that. Mm -mm. It was all handmade. The noodles for the soup was, but I mean, otherwise we had potatoes and meat and meat and potatoes, I always said. And uh, well, we'd like sometimes have scrambled eggs for supper or fried potatoes or like in summertime, there was no freezer for to keep the meat in. So they'd buy a stick of sausage or so, summer sausage or something, but. We had a lot of meatless meals. And um, where were the meals usually prepared? In the kitchen. And was that in the summer months as well? Mm-hmm. Um, and where did they store food to keep it cool during the summer? The root cellar. And um, did your family have a, a typical... Uh, what was a typical meal like as far as seating arrangements in the house and what you would do if you would pray or what was a typical meal like? Yeah, we, we always prayed before we ate. And we, we always all sat around the table too when we ate. And what were some of your favorite meals that your mother made? Well, I don't know. We were tired of soup noodles. <laughs> I maybe heard chicken noodle soup, and she made borscht. She made good borscht too. And what? How do they make borscht? With uh, vegetables and potatoes and meat. But, yeah. And did you have a least favorite meal? No, I don't think so. We ate what was cooked, and and you didn't complain. I know one time. We were shocked and then come home, soup noodles again, and then I said, can I boil myself some eggs? And Dad was sleeping, so Mom said I could, and so I boiled eggs, and uh, well, when I was going to eat it, it was just like raw. I didn't boil it long enough, and I thought, well, there goes my punishment for not eating those soup noodles. You know, I sure didn't eat that egg either. <laughs> so, the, so I never tried it again. <laughs> And did your family make any desserts, or was that... When company was coming, then we'd probably bake a cake, or... There weren't too many cakes. At that time? What about ice cream? Well, homemade, but that had to be made in winter, and that wasn't too often either. You know, when you had ice, you had to... Yeah, we didn't have ice cream that much either. Did your, did your family do, its own, do do their own canning and butchering? Well, pickles we canned, Mom canned. But she didn't can no meats. And um, what about the butchering? Did, they, did your family butcher its own animals for, for meat? Pigs for the pork. Well, over winter, you know, there was uh, meat made sausage and then the hams to put in brine, you know, so. And 
Can you describe the butchering process? Were you around when they did that? Well, they shot the pigs and then they scalded them and scraped the hair off and gutted them and then they ground the meat and made the sausage and hams and whatever, cut it up. Was that a day that it would take to do that? Oh, it would long? take a good day, yeah. Okay. And how did you help out in this process? Carried water. <laughs> and where did you have to carry the water from? From across the, way across the road. I don't know, it was a little ways too. And um, what, was, what was your family's attitude towards alcohol? Well, Dad would always drink white port wine. Would, would your family make any root beer or beer or wine or anything no. like that? Once or twice, Mom made root beer, but that we were small yet then. And uh, beet wine she made sometimes, but not very often. And how does one make beet wine? Boil the beets and use the juice and put sugar and yeast and so forth in. I'm going to move to a slightly different topic about clothing. What types of clothes were common when you were growing up? Well, it was just, well, like I said, we always wore bib overalls, but it was just a cotton dress. We never had nothing else. Did you wear hand-me-downs at all? Yeah, we did that. I did, I know. And what about so your that's... other sisters? Well, I don't know. One claimed she never wore hand-me-downs, but I know I did. I'll never forget, I got this green suit handed down, and I couldn't wait. Well, it was in uh, St. Patrick's Day. That's in March. Anyway, um, I wore that suit to school, and then the teacher, she was hanging up the flag. Well, it isn't St. Patrick's Day yet, and uh, that was the end of my green suit. Well, do I only get to wear it? On St. Patrick's Day, you know, I was disappointed. <laughs> and I mean, it was nice already. I know they were seeding, but... And was it one, was it an outfit your mother had made? No, got it from the neighbor la neighbors. It was a skirt and a jacket is what it was, but it wasn't the right time to wear it, so... <laughs> and... Um... Did anybody in your family sew and embroider a quilt? Mom, well, she'd patch and so on, but she never, she sewed some, but not much. Now, we've talked a little bit about some other aspects of daily life. We'd kind of like to talk a minute about technology. Um, when did your family get electricity at the house? Um... 62, I think. The boy's son-in-laws put it in. So Frank and John put it mm -hmm. in? Mm-hmm. And Albert, Catherine's husband. Did that take a long time? Not really, I think, till I... Because Yvonne was born that time, and uh, they were done till I came home from the hospital, I know. And how did this change the life of your parents? Well, I'm surely it was sure it was good, because she'd have some place to put her milk and her meats and you know whatever leftovers, whatever. And what about a telephone? When, do you know when they first got a telephone? I don't remember exactly when that was either. I suppose Alec would have known that, or maybe Elner. They were still out there. I wasn't. And when when you left home, what what year was that? We got married in fifty. Fifty nine years ago. <laughs> and what what did the house? What was it like when you left? It was the same, like. 
all the time. Amelia, can you describe the town closest to where you grew up? Well, it was a sod building too. It was a post office and a grocery st store. I don't remember, but they used to sell everything out of there too, just like well, material and machinery and all that at one time, but I don't remember nothing of that. And there was a grocery store and a post office. Do you remember what those buildings looked like? It was all, I, I think it was all in this building that was Fayette, that was the post office, I think. I don't know, maybe they had other buildings, I don't. Don't and remember that. Did you did you make the walk to town? Sometimes, much? yeah. Did you ever work in town at all? No, like we'd clean the store for her, or her house. The lady that. Do you remember her name? Anna Fisher. And what was Anna Fisher to the town of Fayette? I don't know, I think some of her relatives, I don't know, I can't say. And what was, was Anna Fisher married? No, she never was. Do you know who, if anybody owned the post office and store before she was there? Don't know that either. I don't really think, but I wouldn't really say if they did or not. Uh, what about... Um, any other families that lived right there in town? Well, there were some Krugers that lived there. And what can you tell us about them? They had twins, and, and uh, well, I was still small why he'd come with a sled and take us to the neighbors to visit a couple times, and that's all I remember about them. Um, and I just from some research, I've, I I know the Littles founded the town. Did you know them? No, I never. Uh, do you remember any of the buildings that were in the town of Fayette? Well, see, there was like a farmer living there too. So there was a barn and some sheds. I didn't even know if there any of that is around or not. What about the location of the town? Was that important? I don't think so. Can you describe for us, you know, where Fayette is? Where it's located? Well, we the farm is, the house is a mile north of Fayette. And I don't know how far it was west of Manning. I don't know exactly. The river runs pretty close to the town. Was that important in its in in it being founded there? I don't. Do you know? I don't know. And is this where your parents would go to buy groceries and mm -hmm. such for home? Yeah. Is there anything that stands out in your memory about this town when it was active? No. Did they have um, a place for travelers to stay in town? I don't as think so. As boarding or anything of that sort? No, I don't think so. And what about the roads to and from? What were those like? Well, they used to be pretty bit muddy. Until they graveled them, they used to be pretty bad. You mentioned the, the sod post office, and I want to go back to that for just a minute. Can you describe what it looked like inside? Well, it was it was a lot of... Now, I can't see if that had, like, that cardboard on. But, I mean, it was a ground roof and everything, too, you know. So I... Um, can, you, can you tell us what Anna Fisher was like? She was a nice lady. She was. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what she looked like? <laughs> no.
Not really. <laughs> it's been a while. up Fayette unless you have anything else you'd like to share with no. us that you can remember about it. Um, in, in conclusion here, I'd like to talk about some of your childhood memories again. Um, what was your most stressful childhood experience? I don't know why can't think of anything. We didn't know any better, and and that's the way it was. Nothing stands out as particularly hard or, mm -mm. or difficult during that time. What about a happier moment? Did you have a happiest childhood memory? I think they were all, were all the same. <laughs> so you wouldn't say there were any big differences? No. your most adventurous childhood moment? Don't know any of anything there either. Nothing that stands out that was different than everything else you'd done before when you were younger? No. Well, anything that you can think of that you would like to add to that? Mm -mm. In conclusion, can you tell us why you think it's important to tell your life story? How what? Why you think it's important to tell your life story? Not really. <laughs> Is there anything you want your children or grandchildren to learn from this? No, I don't th I don't think they'd go for this. <laughs> They've got things much better. <laughs> no, I don't think so.